Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I am the co-founder of Traku. In this video, we will be looking at the analysis of Dashcat 5. We will be looking at Quant, LRDI and Verbal. We will be looking at all the questions, what are the important questions, what are the easy questions. And we will also look at uh, calculated guesses about what the percentiles will be in actual CAT if the questions are of similar difficulty level. We will also tell you what are the questions that you should have attempted and what are the questions that you should have left alone. Let us first look at the verbal section. The verbal section had uh, four uh, RCs. The first RC was on gender and feminism. This was slightly on the easier side. It was an easy read. It uh, also had themes uh, which are relevant uh, in the current day. So it also had uh, current affairs in it. So somebody who is following the cultural wars that happened between the right and the left, especially in the United States, would find this to be an easy read. And as expected, many people have gotten most of the questions correct in this RC. There were two RCs which involved uh, science and technology. One of them involved biology, which involved basically DNA and RNA. Uh, and the other one involved social media and algorithms. Both of them I found to be fairly on the difficult side. Normally science and technology, I have some interest. I read some of the articles, latest articles, but both the RCs over here, I found them to be demanding. And even the questions were not very easy. So there were two RCs which were definitely on the difficult side. There was one RC which was on British politics. Uh, this was uh, about leaders in British politics and it was slightly on the easier side, at least it was an easy read. I could easily go through the passage and understand what exactly the author was trying to convey. Uh, but uh, I missed out on some of the questions uh, because uh, the questions were actually pretty good and uh, I didn't read one of the passage very well, one of the paragraphs, because of which my understanding of uh, the paragraph was slightly uh, on a different uh, side. Because of which I think I did not get one or two questions correct. But otherwise, I felt even this passage was not very difficult. So there were two passages which should definitely be attempted. And there were two paragraphs which I felt were slightly on the difficult side. But the theme of this uh, section was that the verbal ability was definitely on the easier side as compared to the verbal ability of the earlier dash cats. There were three para summaries. There were three para jumbles and two odd one outs. Para jumbles, normally I have some difficulty because there are a lot of combinations that are possible. You are given four... Uh, lines and uh, you can fill them up in any order it can be 4 3 2 1 or 1 2 3 4 so a lot of possibilities emerge but in para jumbles there was at least one question which was very easy so the ordering directly follows and the remaining two para jumbles i felt were slightly on the medium side with respect to para summary also i felt the questions were not very difficult i found uh, both the questions in odd one out to be on the hard side but otherwise overall out of the eight questions in verbal ability I think at least 5 to 6 were definitely solvable. Having said that, overall a score of around say 25 plus in verbal is a good score in this section. Because the RCs were definitely harder and the verbal ability was definitely on the easy to medium side. So a score of 25 plus in this section would be something you should be fairly proud about. Let us now look at the LRDI section. The LRDI section had uh, four sets. There were two sets which had six questions each and two sets which had four questions each. These two sets had six questions each. And these two sets had four questions each. Normally when the LRDI section starts, I spend the first one minute in going through each of the four uh, sets as in I spend around say 15 to 20 seconds in going through the set to get an understanding of what the set is about. Even in this uh, mock I did the same. So I looked at all the four questions, all the four sets and I immediately figured out that the first set I would attempt is the pie chart one. The reason for that is my strategy in LRDI is that in the first seven to eight minutes I should get one four set question correct. Because once I get a four set question correct there will be a lot less pressure on me. I would not feel that, okay, I uh, 15 minutes have passed and I haven't solved one set correct. So once I get one set out of the way, then I can attempt the remaining three sets with a much better uh, state of mind. So looking at it, the thing I was quite certain is that this was a pie chart question. So I felt it might take some time, but if I spend some time, I'll definitely get it correct. So that was the reason I attempted the pie chart question. And within the first three, four minutes, I could get three out of the four questions correct. Because to get 3 out of the 4 questions, I think uh, I didn't have to actually solve the entire pie chart or put the entire pie chart in a table. In a pie chart or in a bar chart or in any line graph, what I try to do is I first look at the questions and I try to see only the data that is needed. I don't try to put the entire data in a table. Whatever the question needs, I'll try to extract that data and solve that question. 
So three out of these four patients, I think I could solve very easily without actually going through the entire data that is given. Only by looking at parts of the data, I was able to solve the three questions. For the fourth question, I think I took some time to actually, uh, I had to solve, uh, I had to take more of the data and it took me some time. But still, I think within the first seven to eight minutes, I was able to get the pie chart question correct. Once I got it correct, then I had a choice to make. I didn't want to attempt the dice question because it looked like a very difficult question at the start. I could kind of figure out that this might involve some uh, pattern formation. But again, I felt uh, it is possible that uh, I'll just get stuck in this and 15 minutes would go and I'll go nowhere. So I didn't want to attempt it. Then I thought of attempting the card uh, game. This was a fill in the table, which I knew that if I actually solve uh, it, if I go through all the clues that are given and I keep filling the table up, after some point, I'll be able to solve the entire set. This is what I felt. But uh, again, I was not so sure whether I should attempt a six question set or not. That's the reason I solved the truth teller question the next. And luckily, the truth teller question was very easy. If you figure out one clue at the importance of one clue, you'll get the entire set within three to four minutes, which is what happened to me. And I could get the truth teller question correct very easily. So after the first 12 to 13 minutes, I was done with two, four uh, set questions. So then I had time to do, uh, spare. Then I went to the card games question. Because out of the six question sets, I felt the card game question was more uh, deterministic. I felt that if I spend time and if I think, I'll get this question correct. The card game question on the other hand, without actually going through it in depth, I felt was a tricky question. It felt like uh, there were multiple possibilities. Each of the questions seemed to be an individual question. So there are uh, aspects of it which I was not very comfortable with. The fill in the table at least felt like a question where once I fill the table up, once I uh, get all the clues done, then I'll be able to answer all the six questions immediately. The dice game on the other hand, because uh, from the first uh, look, it looked like each of the questions was uh, an individual question. So it felt like I had to understand the pattern very thoroughly and I had to solve each of the six questions on an individual basis, which I felt was more tricky. So I didn't want to go there. So I came to the card game and fill in the table uh, uh, set. It was a medium uh, level set. It was not a set where I was able to solve immediately. I think it took me around uh, eight to 10 minutes to actually get this correct. So once I was able to get this also done, I think I had around 15 minutes. Then I went to the dice game and it was a slightly tricky question. It was not a very trivial question. It was not a very simple question. I think the four set uh, questions were fairly easy, but I think the six question sets were slightly uh, difficult, especially the dice game, I think was definitely a tricky question. I did not get some of the questions in the dice uh, game, but uh, overall I felt the entire paper was definitely on the easy to medium side. If in the actual examination you get uh, an LRDI slot with these kind of questions, you should be very happy because many people uh, are terrified of DILR. Once the set becomes slightly on the difficult side, they completely ruin the examination. Over here, there are at least two sets which somebody who uh, maintains their calm, who maintains their nerves. These two questions you will definitely get correct on the day of the examination. If you just spend time, you are going to get this correct. If you are a fairly hardworking guy uh, who has taken a few mocks, who has uh, prepared well, there is no reason why you would not get these two sets correct even on the day of the examination. The only thing that is needed is you should uh, be able to hold your nerves. So having said that, I believe that if you are looking for a good score, the minimum I would expect is for you to get these two questions correct. So that would be getting eight questions correct. That would imply a score of 24 marks. So if you're getting 24 marks plus, I think you have done well. You need not feel worried. If you are able to crack one more set, which I think is difficult, getting three sets correct, uh, psychologically is difficult because people don't want to or don't aim to get 14 questions correct. Uh, that would be terrific. That would be, uh, get you 42 marks. 42 marks, I think, is excellent. But in general, for this section, because of the time constraints, because of the pressure, uh, somebody who is looking to get a very high score, I think, should uh, aim for 30 marks plus in LRDI in this section. But if you are able to get 24 marks plus, even then, I think you should feel uh, quite happy with your attempt. If you are scored less than 24 marks, I think you should definitely uh, introspect. The reason you should introspect is because these two sets, you will have to get them correct. If you are aiming to get into a good college, good MBA college, uh, you should take the easy fruits, the low hanging fruits. And both of these sets are fairly easy, which you should definitely get correct. So think about it. In general, what I would suggest is somebody who is preparing for uh, CAT, there are a few types of sets which you should definitely know how to solve. One is the truth teller one that I just discussed. Other is a four set Venn diagram. The next one is a spider web. How do you answer a spider web question?
these are like uh, quintessential questions these are uh, questions from these uh, types of topics which are often asked every two years every three years at least one slot one set is going to come from one of these topics so you should have a thorough understanding of how to solve this uh, types of sets once you know the method you will easily get all of the sets correct in those particular topics so definitely go through them and i hope this analysis was useful for you hi friends welcome to cracko's video series uh, in this particular video we'll be analyzing the uh, dc5 mock uh, so i have taken i have done the blind attempt of the quant section maruti has done the blind attempt for the verbal and the dilr section so uh, i'll start with the quant analysis i'll tell you what my feeling was about this mock i felt this was slightly harder uh, for me particularly it was slightly harder than dc4 dc4 i felt was like proper exact cat level i felt this was slightly harder but on reflecting back see basically you are not able to differentiate whether the mock is harder or whether you are not up to your game on that particular day and i feel this was exactly cat level but i kind of underperform because when i went back to the questions most of the questions were doable as such so there were basically four easy questions which should have been done in under like uh, under 1 minute or around 1 minute as such and then there were like uh, seven difficult questions of which i should have left most of these seven difficult questions the remaining questions 11 questions were moderate questions and i should have gotten these right so i feel that mostly that i didn't actually perform as to uh, this i think this is kind uh, this is exactly like cat level but there were many mistakes made which is why i performed less than i would have normally done in a cat level paper so basically over here i feel this is kind of uh, what you should expect if this is basically if you have a cat level zone of cat level uh, quant sections this is at the higher end of the zone dc4 is at the lower end of that zone but very slight difference as such so there should not be a huge difference in the marks that you are getting essentially over here i feel that what uh, mattered is leaving those seven difficult questions identifying and leaving those seven difficult questions because if you got stuck in those seven difficult questions it would be a very different attempt than if you successfully left most of those seven difficult questions of these i think you should have at max done three you should have left four the attempt i think a good attempt would have been 18 and of those 18 uh, you should have uh, gotten most of those right or like 16 right that would have been a very good attempt as such i feel that uh, i'm obviously saying this for like what what would take what would it take to clear 95 percentile or 98 percentile in quant and that is what i think 18 uh, questions attempted would have easily cleared 95 percentile probably even 98 percentile in quant what i feel is that uh, those who are doing really really well can attempt 22 and i'm sure they can get 22 right but if you're looking just to clear the section with a good score and get 98 percentile in quant just to uh, do that 18 attempt would have been good in most circumstances circumstances in 18 attempt 16 to 18 attempt would have been good if you have done less than that i think you should look at what questions you should not have actually attempted in the first place so basically those kind of errors if you avoid making that is basically what you should look for because even the cat section varies quite a bit so whenever the cat quant section is at the higher end of that difficulty level zone you should look at the question before attempting you should consider it quite uh, clearly that if you are finding that the cat section is not as easy as you had expected you have to say that i have to leave around four questions now i have to pick those four questions to leave once you start thinking that way your entire attempt goes differently because then you are looking at only 18 of the 22 questions seriously and you are not spending time on the remaining four questions as such i basically did not think that way because i thought this was a doable uh, section i did not think that this is a difficult section and because of that i try to look at every single question and that is where i think i've made a mistake whenever you feel that this section is slightly difficult at the upper end of the zone try to pick the four questions you're going to leave try to attempt 18 questions and get those 18 questions right if you had done that particular strategy with this particular section you would have done fairly well now uh, one more thing that is very important over here is that when you are attempting only 18 questions out of 22 you should get most of these 18 questions right accuracy is super important what often happens is that when you are trying to attempt all 22 questions or you go through all 22 questions and give a like spend half a minute or one minute on all 22 questions you end up not reading some questions which are easy questions also correctly so there were some questions over here where under time pressure you would have made mistake where basically like for example when you are asked how much uh, time instead of being asked how much time would x take to complete the entire work you were asked how much time would x complete take to complete half of the work now if you are under time pressure that is where you would have made a mistake it was an easy question 
but under time pressure most students would get that wrong so basically when you try to limit the number of questions firstly you don't make a mistake in those kind of questions secondly basically you make sure that whatever you read the accuracy has to be super high on those limited set of questions because in 22 questions you can get more long and uh, lose marks or on 18 questions you can aim for like 80 percent 90 percent accuracy so that is what you should try to do when you have to adjust strategy for a harder slightly difficult uh, section is try to limit the number of questions that you do and try to do those limited number of questions perfectly read the question carefully and answer each of those questions that you are attempting perfectly accuracy becomes super important when you have decided to leave four questions okay so this is what i would think would have been the right strategy after my attempt uh, always remember whenever you encounter a slightly difficult section decide that four questions i am leaving and decide which four questions after uh, just taking a look at the question only you can say that this is probably not the question I, I should attempt and try to leave that question you have four questions to leave the remaining 18 questions that you attempt you should be absolutely certain in, about the answer while attempting those questions so that is what i will leave you with for this quant section